Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you to our new, extraordinary and ambitious project, the Cello Academy. The Cello Academy intends to provide you with very detailed information about cello technique and cello literature. If you are an amateur who would like to handle this instrument a little better, if you are a student in search of making quicker progress, if you are a teacher needing some inspiration for the daily work, or if you are a cellist playing in an orchestra looking for certain solutions, then I am sure you will benefit greatly from the Cello Academy. You will find a variety of chapters, lectures or lessons, each focused on one specific topic. We all know that there are already uncountable schools, exercise collections and all sorts of etudes. These editions are most of the time very helpful, but many times they can be confusing too. This is the advantage of the Cello Academy. Our chapters are videos and by showing and explaining everything, I'll try to eliminate confusions as much as possible. Let me give you a few examples. For instance, the scale. Everything concerning a scale, like how to hold your arm, how to put your fingers down, how to separate finger action from arm action. How to finger it, how to bow it, when to stretch, and in general, how to practice the whole thing in order to be able to play it fast and evenly. This and more you will find slowly demonstrated in the chapter The Scale. Shifting is considered to be of major, if not main, importance for cellists. The size of our instrument and the music written for it constantly cause situations where changes of positions are unavoidable. In the last variation of Don Quixote by Richard Strauss, we are forced to change positions almost constantly. The first one you slide from B to F sharp, you slide on the old finger, the three, and put the first one down on the F sharp. The second slide is from D to F sharp, and you put the third finger down and slide on the third finger into the F sharp. The next one, you try to hide between two bows. It's like jumping. Now you slide with the first finger into the E. Now from finger to finger, three to three. And now this is like the first one. You slide down on the three and put the first one down. Here's another type. You slide on the two and put the first finger down. Now I see the whole thing without talking. So, for every cellist, the questions when and how do I shift are of elementary interest. In the chapter Shifting, you'll see many, many shifts and how to execute them. Plus, I'll try to give you some help to decide which slide is appropriate
or the specific musical phrase. In order to get a basic intonation and the stability of our left hand, we need to practice double stops. We all know situations where it is impossible to hear oneself, like playing in an orchestra. In these moments, we have to be absolutely sure about the capability of our left hand. I discovered that practicing fourth instead of thirds develops a secure basic intonation in the fastest way. These were fourth in a chromatic manner. Of course, there are more variations and more double stops too. You should look them up in the chapter Double Stops. Very interesting in this context is the chapter Intonation and Phrasing. There I will talk about a special intonation you need to make phrases convincing. The basic intonation is fine for orchestral playing maybe for some chamber music, but definitely not for solo performances. Here you need a more refined understanding of intonation. The simple song, the simple piece by Casals, Song of the Birds, will serve us as an example. Adjust the notes according to harmonies and melody. Listen. You need a high B. This way of intonation creates a certain tension between the notes and by that makes phrases understandable. Plus, it reveals the character of the piece. Besides the chapters which explain technical matters, there are more than I mentioned right now, we invite you to have a look at the examples of the cello literature. Here I'll talk about structure, form and content, so-called contents of music, and how we can apply the technique properly to serve the musical ideas. A simple but interesting example for this is the Bourrée by Bach in C major. <laughs> voices. This is a movement with two voices. They do not happen simultaneously but after each other. Listen. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. And it continues. 
Take care and so long.